One of the big takeaways from this conference is a, is a big agreement on internal trade. Can you tell us sort of what that entails? We agreed as a group of premiers to uh, have a comprehensive renewal of our agreement on internal trade. Uh, clearly, we want to do more business with each other. It's grown by about 60% between 2002 and 2012, uh, all con consonant with growth in the economy. So we're not just saying it's all because of us, but it has grown. Uh, we think there's things we can do uh, to address issues. Labor mobility, there's a lot of progress been made on that, but there's other areas where we can make further progress, particularly with skilled trades. Uh, we think we can harmonize some of the regs there and how you get credit for the hours you worked, et cetera. But we're also gonna take a look at uh, government procurement, goods, services, investment, uh, regulatory cooperation and technical barriers. So there's gonna be a focus on some key areas and then we'll move on from there. But uh, I think it's a positive movement. So this, this amounts to an agreement that a product made in, in New Brunswick should be saleable in Saskatchewan as though it was made in Saskatchewan. And, and a person who got their credentials there should be able to work over here. Why has this taken so long? Why, why was that not automatic? Well, because a lot of these matters were uh, t traditionally under provincial jurisdiction and related to their local workforces. We're seeing more mobility in workforces now. We're mm -hmm. seeing people move in, and work in other parts of the country and they don't necessarily want to live there forever. Uh, but if you're going to have a tradesperson in Nova Scotia skilling up there, working a part of their year or even a major part of their year in another province like Alberta, the time and effort they put into upgrading themselves and working there should count. And you're seeing bilateral agreements, but this was an area where we thought we could all make progress today. And it's to the benefit of all of us. As you move forward on these sort of things, do you get a lot of stick from uh, uh, skilled trades associations, small manufacturers in Manitoba? They all want to see people get the skills. Their challenge always is retention. And retention relates to wages and other opportunities. And uh, I've been on a skills tour in Manitoba very recently with our ministers involved. And one of the things we're discovering is, is that, for example, small employers do not necessarily have the ability to give them all the hours they need. So we're coming up with innovative approaches, co-ops, where you can sponsor uh, tradespeople to work in a variety of settings and get their hours. But also we're finding that if somebody goes to another place and they want to come back, what they gain there should count back here, which makes it easier to employ them back in Manitoba. You've been at a few of these conferences now. Was there anything different about the dynamic around the table? I, I would say uh, this year was very good in the sense that people were really finding a way to work together. It may have to do with the fact that there's only one election going on at the moment in New Brunswick. Uh, and uh, Premier Alwood has always been very good at working with other premiers. But uh, everybody was fully engaged and looking for ways to overcome differences and cooperate. So you saw coming into this some tension between Saskatchewan and Ontario they came together and they're actually sitting on the committee with Nova Scotia and Manitoba on the internal trade issues. Uh, you saw a lot of uh, dialogue around missing and murdered Aboriginal women, uh, with a, also with a focus on child welfare, Aboriginal child welfare. People came together and want to collaborate on that. Uh, the energy chapter, we now for the first time ever have British Columbia and Quebec fully at the table. So we're going to take some more time to work on that strategy, but to have everybody at the table working together huge plus, quite frankly, uh, to have everybody cooperating. So when you get everybody engaged and everybody cooperating, that gives you the ability to get more done. Tell me about this guy, Philippe Cuillard. Uh, he was very good today uh, and yesterday. He really wants to work with the other premiers. He sees uh, pluses for his own province. He's uh, obviously representing his province. But when we can cooperate on uh, issues like uh, energy and have a focus on climate change, that's something he's interested in. Uh, we're, we, for example, have done a lot of work on what we call a purchasing alliance for drugs, where we're all collaborating together to increase our purchasing power and to get lower prices on drugs. We, drugs. we estimated on generics and brands, we're saving about $253 million a year now. That's before Quebec enters into the purchasing alliance. We think we can leverage more savings with their participation. That's a market of what? Another eight, nine million people. Did he need any kind of reassurance or any adjustment to that, that purchasing program before Quebec comes in? Just that it will have clear and tangible benefits for his own citizens, and uh, that's exactly what we all want. So there was no issues there whatsoever. Premier Giz, before this uh, conference began, was talking about how it's uh, 13 months to the next federal election, and to some extent what the premiers want to do is dump a lot of issues on the table that all the federal parties are going to have to address in the next election. Is that an analysis that you share, and, and to what extent well, do you... Well, we, we did focus on two big things that we think uh, should be a discussion. Uh, infrastructure as part of the Fiscal Arrangements Working Group, ensuring that there's sufficient federal, provincial, 
commitment to renewing infrastructure because we want to continue to grow our, our economies and create good jobs. That's a big issue for all of us right now. And secondly, the issue of aging uh, and how, what we can do to ensure that we have proper resources, particularly in healthcare, to look after the fact that we have more people entering that phase of life, living longer periods of time, and requiring more supports in the community to stay independent as long as possible. So those were two of the, of the uh, priorities. But you know, we've got uh, long-term issues around lifting the caps on immigration so that we can have more skilled workers, making sure our labor market agreements allow us to train existing Canadians to get access to those good jobs. All of those issues are still there and we'd like to see progress on them. In previous summers, the premiers have been quite demonstrative about the fact that they're not meeting as a group with Prime Minister Harper. Um, uh, what would be different if you were having regular First Minister's conferences? Well, the provinces have always met separately for 55 years now, uh, but there is good reason for us all to come together with the Prime Minister and the Premiers. The last time we did that in a significant way was just when we entered into the recession and it made a huge difference because we had a coordinated approach to dealing with that great recession. It, managed, it allowed Canada to do quite well relative to everybody else in that in terms of keeping our economy going, reducing the number of people dislocated from work, access to credit, the banks, all of that sort of thing. Uh, there's things we can do together if we wish to do it. And uh, there's always a willingness to have the Prime Minister with us uh, at least a couple times a year to take a look at how we can move the country forward.